Hello again, this is Mike with Toy Train Tips and Tricks, and in this episode we are talking about the device that is the heart and soul of every electric train operation, because without electricity, we have no electric trains, and so the device that's responsible for taking the household current that runs through our wall outlets and turning it into usable current for our trains and allowing us to control those trains and sometimes adding special effects is the transformer. Even though the examples I'm going to show you here are for AC three rail trains, many of these tips will also apply to two rail and DC trains as well. Now, since we're talking about electricity, let's talk first about some safety tips. So you were scrounging around in the attic and you found grandpa's old train set and it has a transformer that looks like this. And safety tip number one is if the transformer looks like this, please do not use it. Please do not use it. These have been, these are at least 80 years old since the last one was made 80 to 100 to 110 years old. We have no idea what's going on with the wiring on the inside. We have cloth insulation on the outside, which is deteriorating. We don't know if anything in here is fried. And if so, there could be a direct connection to full line current running right through this arm, just fractions of an inch away from your finger. And so you could get, if there's a malfunction, you could get full wall current running right through your finger. And that could cause a significant injury or possibly even death. I say there's the possibility of electrocution. Secondly, uh, again, you don't know what's going on here. These do not have circuit breakers. Um, this is a horrible fire hazard. So while these are really cool, it's a conversation piece. Put it on a bookshelf, put it on a display case. Uh, use it as a doorstop if you like, but do not use a transformer that looks like this to power your trains. Second safety tip, regardless of the vintage of your transformer, check the cord. Make sure that there's no cracks, there's no fraying, there's no exposed wires. If it is like this and uses cloth insulation, pitch it. Uh, older transformers, uh, older rubber insulation after a number of decades begins to dry out, crack, and this, again, is both a health hazard and a fire hazard. So if you find a cord like this, either choose a different transformer, or if you know someone uh, who is, it may even be yourself, who is, um, who is comfortable with electricity, you can replace the cord with a modern cord, as this one has been done. This is an old post-war transformer that now has a brand new modern cord. So if you're not uh, familiar with electricity, if you don't feel uh, comfortable working with it, please do not try this yourself. Uh, find someone who is comfortable or choose a different transformer. They're not really that expensive. Your life is worth more. Safety tip number three, circuit breakers. Look for a transformer that includes a circuit breaker. An easy way to check this, even on post-war items, is look for a UL label. Underwriters Laboratories would not put their seal of approval on any item that did not have a circuit breaker, either an internal or sometimes you'll see a button that can be reset. Um, but in any case, um, this is to protect the equipment, it is to protect you, and it is to protect your house from burning down. Uh, circuit breakers do not protect your trains, however. Uh, it's mainly to protect your house from burning down and to protect you from becoming electrocuted. Um, so um, I always put mine on a strip uh, plug that has an additional circuit breaker just to give an additional layer of protection. Um, but circuit breakers are important. If you're using a pre-war transformer or an early post-war transformer without a circuit breaker, um, you can add an aftermarket circuit breaker, but um, look for that UL label and you are in better shape. Okay, with safety tips out of the way, the next tip is match your transformer to the needs of your layout. Most starter sets only come with a transformer that is just powerful enough to power the components that came with the set. The locomotive, maybe if there's a lighted car or two involved, 
generally the starter set transformers are underpowered. Um, so for a larger layout and for operating multiple locomotives, uh, lighted cars uh, and accessories and, and such, you want a more powerful transformer. Well, how do you know the power of the transformer? Well, that's going to be listed on here in one of two ways, either watts here, 25 watts versus 110 watts, or it is listed as volt amps here, 20 volt amps. Um, so you can either check your volt amps or your watts. It gives you a relative idea of how powerful the transformer is. Keep in mind that that rating is the total output of the transformer for all taps. So, for example, a Lionel ZW that says rated at 275 watts, that is for all four outputs. You're not going to get 275 watts through a single output on that transformer. That is the total for all four. Keep that in mind. Also, when you're checking the power rating of your transformer, make sure that the input requirements on your transformer match the power that you have in your region. Uh, here, this one says 60 cycles, 60 cycles or 60 hertz. Um, that is good for the good old USA for our household current. Uh, it could say anywhere between 110 and 120, 110, 120, or 115. Sometimes it'll say, uh, and make sure that it is that 60 cycles. Uh, if you live in Canada or in Europe or somewhere else around the world, make sure that the power pack that you're using, the transformer that you're using, um, matches the uh, current that you have running through your walls, or you'll need some sort of an adapter. Also, check your input and output for whether your output is AC or DC power. If the output is AC, it will usually say transformer. Uh, if it is DC, it will usually say power pack or rectifier. Another way to check is on the terminals themselves. For example, this one says AC, very clearly marked AC. Um, some are not uh, as clearly marked. This one just gives you your voltages. Um, and it assumes that you know that it's AC. Generally, if you have a power pack that has DC output and accessory output, the accessory is usually AC, and it'll either say accessory or ACC or sometimes just AC, and then the track power will say DC out. Also keep in mind that you can mix and match different manufacturers. For example, for Lionel trains, you can use a Lionel transformer. You can also, in certain circumstances, use a Marx transformer or even an American Flyer transformer. Uh, Marx and American Flyer, the output is a few volts less, uh, so your trains, trains will run a little bit slower on the high end, um, but with certain starter set locomotives that tend to fly off the tracks at full power anyway, uh, that might not be such a good, uh, a bad thing uh, to have the top end be a little slower. Uh, another thing to keep in mind is that uh, Marx and American Flyer packs tend to be a little cheaper than Lionel uh, for the same amount of wattage. So when you're comparing price per watt, maybe keep that Marx power pack in mind as a viable option. Okay, we've determined that everything is safe. These are AC power packs for our AC trains. There was a time when DC, um, especially in starter sets, was popular in the 70s and 80s, but uh, generally AC, AC, AC. Uh, so that's what we're dealing with, AC power packs, and they come in a variety of flavors. Now, a lot of beginner sets just came with uh, two connections. And this would be variable voltage to your track. That's easy. For that, you pick one wire that would connect to your center rail and one wire that would connect to your outer rail. Same thing here and here. And if this is the only transformer you have hooked up to your, to your layout, you have a simple loop, it doesn't really matter which one is which. Uh, just hook it up and you're ready to roll. Uh, very simple, very easy. The only time it makes a difference is if you are phasing multiple transformers together of these small ones um, and then you have to choose one side is going to be your common and that's going to be the one that is phased together and check here for my video on phasing transformers 
up here. There you go. All right. So uh, two with two connections. One goes to the center rail, one goes to the outer rail. You're set and you're ready to go. But what if your transformer looks like this? So during the post-war era, Lionel made a number of different transformers that connected different posts to different sections of the transformer winding. And the result of this is that depending on which posts you connect to, you can get different voltages and some are variable and some are constant. So um, if you're uh, running a starter set with a smaller locomotive, maybe you would hook up your variable voltage to a smaller, uh, smaller uh, voltage, like maybe 15 volts. Or if you were, you know, running a big, uh, you know, twin motored F3 with a lot of passenger cars, then you might want to hook it up to 19 volts. But how do you know which connection is which? Well, Lionel was nice enough to give us this chart. And this chart shows us for most of the popular post-war transformers, not only which ones are variable voltage, which ones are constant voltage, uh, but also gives you an idea of which posts you should be connecting to to be your common for the layout, for your common bus. So if you're using multiple transformers, which one should be going to the outer rail and which one should be co connecting the common of your multiple transformers. So here are uh, here is the chart. Um, and you see here different ones for different transformers. I will put a longer uh, hold on this at the very end of the video so that you can take your time looking for your particular model and uh, copy off or maybe even print screen uh, to give yourself a copy of uh, the version that fits your transformer the best. Um, so look for that at the very, very end of the video uh, where I'll have this chart uh, you know, displayed better. So that gives you an idea of which connections to make. Now sometimes it'll say right on the back of the transformer. For example, with the ZW over here, the ZW had four outputs, but all four are variable voltage. So for all four of them, the U post, the U post is common and it says right on it, U common. And then the bottom post is the variable output for the four different handles on the ZW. Many of the modern transformers like this CW80 uh, also makes it a little easier and that everything is color coded for you. Even though we have two inputs, or sorry, two outputs for track and two outputs for accessory, uh, the black is common. So the black variable would go to the outside rail. The black uh, constant would go to your common for accessories. And then the two reds, the red variable goes to the center rail. The red constant goes to your accessories. And uh, so by already having the black and red there for you, it makes it a whole lot easier to determine which one is the common, that's the black, and which one is the hot, that's the red. And another thing that um, makes a difference is, does it have a whistle control? Does it have a whistle and a bell control uh, and a direction control? Uh, the direction control is simply when you press it, it stops power to the track to activate the reversing unit in the locomotive. Um, most of them have this, although I find this one not truly necessary because you can always turn the voltage off here. Um, if your transformer does not have these, you can either add aftermarket buttons or another video will show you how to, uh, to make these yourself um, to, uh, to operate the whistle, the bell, and the direction control. Uh, but that's the subject of another video coming down the line. Okay, so, uh, so rule of thumb, the, the more wattage, the better. Get one that will fit your budget. What I find is that rather than getting the mega transformer like the Lionel ZW, uh, I can use multiple smaller transformers, again, phased with one another, um, to control smaller portions of the layout and get the same effect at a cheaper price per watt. However, if you want everything all consolidated into one unit, then the ZW, uh, either the modern or post-war version, might be right for you and might work for your budget. 
Another consideration is accessory power. You can use the accessory power off of this, but that's going to drain more of your power from your train. Remember, this is the total wattage available. Doesn't mean that that's all going to the track. You add accessories on to this and it's going to diminish the amount of power available for your train. So I take these starter set transformers and use these for my accessories. I can um, set it up you know, there for roughly 16 volts, there for about 12 volts, and so on and so forth. And I can check that with a voltmeter to see what it's actually putting out. And I can customize the output for the different accessories. And again, just by phasing these together into a string, I can use common wire, um, common wiring for the layout. It saves wiring and it saves my main transformer for control of my trains. It gives me that extra wattage that I need for the track and not necessarily uh, for lights and accessories. All right, to recap, step one, safety first. Check to make sure that you've got uh, the right cord, the right uh, type of transformer that's not going to kill you, um, that you've got circuit breakers to protect your house and yourself, that you're not going to be electrocuted. Make sure that it is safe to use. Secondly, check your outputs. Make sure that you're using uh, AC power for AC trains. If you have a DC set, make sure that it says that it's DC output and make sure that it fits the power system that you're using in your region. Thirdly, you want to make sure that your wattage matches your needs. Whether you do that by buying fewer big transformers or more small transformers and linking them together, um, it's your choice, it's your budget, depending on your needs for space and uh, your uh, wants for how you want to control your layout. And that's the considerations. It doesn't matter whether it's new or old or in between. That's the basics of your transformers. And uh, follow along with these charts here at the end to see if you have a multi-volt transformer to see what connections you should be using for what purpose. All right, so I hope you enjoyed the video. If you do, please like it, share it, subscribe, tell your friends, tell your neighbors. We'll catch you next time on Toy Train Tips and Tricks. Until then, keep the trains running. And again, stay tuned for that bonus chart here at the end to show you which um, connections you would use depending on the type of Lionel Transformer that you have. All right, keep those trains running, and here we go.